Good morning. This morning we're going to open with hymn number 305 in the gray hymnal. It will also be projected on the screens. But we're going to sing the last verse in Spanish. So let's just speak the fourth verse together in Spanish. We'll just say it. De colores, de colores se visten los campos en la primavera. De colores, de colores son los pajaritos que vienen de afuera. De colores, de colores es el arco iris que vemos lucir. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. And we will also sing the refrain two times between the verses, even though that's not what's marked. <laughs> Please rise in body and spirit. Good morning. It is so good to see this room filling up after so a couple of years of it being so empty and preaching to a camera. It's so delightful to see everybody here today. How many of you 
of you guys have been to the Wooden Shoe Tulip Bulb uh, Farm. If you haven't ever been out there, it's incredible. In the uh, early spring, there's hundreds of acres of tulips, and you can see whole sections with single color tulips here and there, all mixed around. But my favorite field to look at is the tulip field that has all the colors mixed together. That's the one that delights my eye. And you delight me by being here today, the diversity of people. This is our annual flower communion service, always held on the first Sunday of June. And you'll be hearing more about the service, but it's all about recognizing the wonderful diversity we have every time you bring your unique self to this place. So thank you for coming. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And I wanted to uh, invite uh, Leanne Nail up here to give a special welcome to our speaker this morning, Ruben Habito. So. So as the teacher for our UU Compassionate Mind Sangha and Salem Zen Center, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome Ruben Habito, Abito, the professor of world religions and spirituality at Southern Methodist University and Zen teacher in the Harada Yasatani lineage. He's the closest I've ever come to meeting a real live Buddha and it's why I've studied with him since 1989. Thank you, Ruben, for joining us today. Yes, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here. Welcome. Now let's have our flower communion. Good morning. Good morning. In 1923, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, Unitarian minister Norbert Kaput sent his divisive congregation on a task one early summer day. The next Sunday, the first Sunday in June, they were to bring in a flower or budding branch, anything they wanted. And so they did. Yellow daisies and red roses, pansies, lilies, pink dogwoods. He said to them, these flowers are like ourselves. Different colors and different shapes, sizes, each needing different kinds of care. But each beautiful, each important and special in its way. May we remember our beauty and gifts and recognize the beauty and gifts in others as we say our affirmation. Love is our doctrine. Compassion is our way. Here we seek to create a joyful home for free religious exploration. Build a community of caring fellowship, nurture the hopes, and serve the needs of our world. And now, you all have done it again. You have sent in a no record number of photos of flowers. Thank you so much. This is definitely becoming part of our annual tradition. And so Doc Hadley has created two videos, and here's the first video with special music from Marsha Christensen, who uh, composed it just for this. So here we go.
And the last chalice we light for our children and youth, both in religious education and in the world at large. Thank you, Joey. Yeah, go ahead and blow it out. Perfect. Thank you. This is by Amy Zucker Morgenstern. Within the heart of the flower, the fountain of beauty. Within the heart of the community, a fire that warms and dances. Within the heart of each of us, a spark of the spirit of life. Holy, holy, holy. Please join me in singing the flame into life. Good morning. Can everybody young or young at heart please join me up front here for a special time for all ages? Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. We need to have some more room up here I because know. we're going to be asking some other people to come up in just a second. So this is usually a time we have a story for all ages, a time for all ages. But today we wanted to celebrate something special. Uh, we are pleased to welcome 11 new members into our religious community today. And so we're having a new member recognition ceremony. So I would like to invite the new members who have signed the book to come up and, and I'll call your names. If you'll just come up and stand so people can uh, see you and welcome you into our community. And you won't be required to do much, so don't worry about it. We just <laughs> want to say hello to you and give people a chance to see you. So we're going to start with Deanna Garcia. And, and I know it's hard for you to get up here, Deanna, but we're glad you're doing it. Dave Lindley. Is Dave here? Dave is here, I see him. And Pam is here too. All these were in this new member class with me. Welcome. Susan Rawson has joined, but she's not here today. Faith Rockenstein is here today. Come on up, Faith, I know you're here. Stuart Rose, I don't know if I've seen Stuart this morning. Stuart couldn't make it today. Uh, we're gonna get uh, Kurt Schneider and Jeff Skyzak are not here today, but they joined and we'll be uh, saying something about them later on when they uh, are here. We have Bob and Leslie Zygan and uh, finally Francine Leckie. I had the great pleasure of being in, in uh, a long class with all of these people in a new member class, and they're, we're just so delighted. You know that becoming a member here is both simple and difficult. When people sign the membership book, they are saying that this is their spiritual home, that this community offers a place for celebration and solace, a place for service and for searching. The members and friends of this congregation join together to challenge and nurture one another in speaking honestly, 
in acting with compassion, in loving without prejudice, in living with integrity, and in responding to the demands of justice with courage and faith. And Anna Talley of our uh, new member team is going to continue reading. Thank you for being here for signing the membership book. It takes courage to say yes, to trust a new community to take you in, to love you in your uniqueness, and to challenge you to become something more than you have ever been. Your gifts are a priceless addition to our religious home. Will you join in the life of this congregation, giving and receiving the gifts of this community? We also want to welcome all of the new children that have been joining us in recent months. Your energy, questions, and curiosity are what carry the light of this congregation forward. May you find new friends here, and may you dream of a bright tomorrow. Thank you, congregation, for being here, too. When people join this or any other Unitarian Universalist congregation, they are joining a community of people, not a minister or a building. And because you, the members and friends of this congregation, are already so generous and creative, and diverse and interesting and friendly people. Others come and want to be a part of this good thing, and no wonder. Will you welcome these people into our congregation? Will you reach out to them in friendship, including them in our activities and fellowship? Will you be open to their unique gifts and perspectives? Will you extend a warm welcome to each of them, remembering that each of us was once a new member? Will the new members of the congregation please rise? You're already here. Um, no, member. I'm sorry. This is the members. So all of you guys in the, in the congregation rise in body or spirit and read with me the welcome of new members projected up here on the screen. <clears throat> we welcome, welcome you into, into membership in the Unitarian Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Salem. Salem. Through, Through your faith, faith and your questions, we grow stronger as a congregation. Through your gifts and your energy, our possibilities multiply. Through the dreams that you cherish and your hope for a better world, our days become brighter and our vision renewed. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You can go, go bolt back to your seats. Yeah. You, <laughs> you had enough of this being on show. Thank you, new members. Thank you. Okay. If everybody in the center can please stand to create the love arch, the children will be on our way. Thank you. Why don't you take a deep breath right now and just be in this moment feeling the deeper rhythms of our lives. Settling in and centering ourselves. Our vision is clear. This past week I was looking at the expressions of the faces of some men and women, I was watching them. And they were smiling and they were so joyful and the tenderness in their expressions was just amazing. Looking at their faces, looking at such joyful, compassionate faces. These were the faces of parents and grandparents playing with their children their babies, teaching them to swim. 
I just loved looking at those faces. Such love and such compassion. Long ago, the Buddha reminded us that even as a mother watches over her child, so with boundless compassion should one cherish all living beings. Compassion is our way. And gratitude. On a late afternoon walk, I pause at the top of a hill and I gaze eastward. And off in the east, I see Mount Jefferson, snow-capped, purple-hued. I see all the Cascade Mountains. I see all the beauty before me. It's just amazing, the glorious sights of this world. They come to us as gifts. May our hearts be filled with gratitude. For gratitude for the gift of all things in our lives. Gratitude is our way. Compassion and gratitude. Thank you for adjusting my mic. As you'll notice, there's at least a foot difference <laughs> between the Reverend and I. I'm Lorna Youngs with Lifelines Lay Ministry. And I would like to read to you the joys and sorrows that have been posted on our website, as well as the joys and sorrows that have been written in the black book that we have in the foyer, which is the old way, pre-COVID way, <laughs> in which we used to record joys and sorrows. But now all of us are in the world of technology, whether we enjoy it or not. So Tracy Boyle writes, on May 23rd, I received a diagnosis of stage 1-2 prostate cancer. I've been told it's 98% treatable. Yay. I must meet with, uh, I meet with an oncologist on June 9th regarding treatment. Your thoughts and prayers will be greatly appreciated. And you have them, Tracy. And we have uh, from a congregant, a joy and concern mix. Diane and Egan Bodker have moved to Junction City to be closer to their daughter and grandsons. Sorry to see them, glad they are closer to family, and they will be greatly missed. And uh, I don't really have, I can't quite read the name of this next one. I think it's Joy, it's uh, a Joy and a Concern. I want to say my thoughts are with the people in the grocery store and school shootings. May those in power change the rules of gun control. We need change and we need it now. Also, I've been at my job for a year and got a substantial raise to help the family. And of course, you know these days with everything rising so fast. I'm glad to hear that. And finally, from Leanne Nail. Love and light for my brother um, to Thursday, uh, David Tracy, who passed away in peace with his wife, daughter at his side. And our thoughts and our prayers are with you. The end. So if you want to uh, put uh, joy and sorrows, just go to our website. Press the button for Joys and Sorrows, and that'll give, lead you right into the web page where you can uh, leave your uh, joy or sorrows. You can put it in the book. Uh, and the, when a member of Lifelines Lay Ministry will read that. And Lifelines is here to serve you, uh, to help the minister in, the, in the con helping the congregation with all of the concerns and joys they may have. And also, once a month, we have compassionate connection for those who just need a little extra TLC. And what we ha ask you to do is, at the end of next Sunday's service, come to the front of the church. We'll 
we will move to the minister's office. And there you had the opportunity to share your concern and receive the connection and warmth of members of this congregation. Thank you very much. Please join in singing number, hymn number 63 in the gray hymnal, Spring Has Now Unwrapped the Flowers, number 63, and you may sing this seated. In the name of Providence, which implants in the seed the future of the flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony, in the name of the highest, in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner what they are, in the name of sages and great religious leaders, who sacrifice their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution, sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from one another. In this holy resolve, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen. I'd like to begin by inviting us all to first be still. First, assume a posture that is conducive to stillness by remaining on your seat with your feet on the floor, with your back straight. You may rest on your backrest or not. You might just come up and prop yourself up a little forward with your back straight as your uh, bone structure allows. And as you take that posture conducive to stillness, breathe deeply in and out with awareness of each breath. And as you do so, let your mind and heart simply settle in the here and now, just following every breath, bringing you back home here. So for two minutes, let us just Take this posture and allow ourselves to come home together in the stillness.
breathing in, we are grateful for this gift of life that comes from all the other elements of the universe coming to us in this oxygen we take in. Breathing out, we give back our whole life back to the world as our gift back to the world. Open our hearts and welcome the embrace of the universe affirming us and breathing in, breathing out. Let us also embrace back, embrace each and everything in this universe, welcoming them into our lives, opening our hearts receiving the love and compassion and giving back that love and compassion. And as we find ourselves at home, here, now, affirmed, connected, our hearts leap for joy in gratitude. Thank you. I'd like to begin by conveying to everyone in this congregation, especially to Pastor Rick and all the staff members, Sarah, Marsha, and all of those who contribute to the life of this church, my deepest gratitude for your openness and welcoming of the Salem Zen Center here under the guidance of Leanne Roshi, who is here this morning with her beloved husband, Ike and there are many members of the congregation here. You have given us a house, a home, a shelter, a place to be connected, so thank you. May I just invite the members of the Salem Zen community to raise your hand so we will know who you are, where you are. Thank you. And so they, are, they join me in thanking you, the whole community, for that warm welcome and, 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 and the shelter and sense of belonging that you give to all of us. I, this is my first time here visiting in person, but I have already felt that connection with you through Leanne and her community for some years now, and so my gratitude abounds. I would like to just offer a few pointers. That's what we call the Zen talks that we offer. These are not things, ideas that you need to uh, remember and then uh, forget later on, but just pointers to some things that you may find already lurking within you. Today, I am very honored in a, in a very auspicious way to come here to be with you on this Flower Communion Day, celebration of our Flower Communion. And you have already been receiving the message from all directions here through the pictures and sounds and music. But the first pointer I would like to offer is that you are a flower. Yes, yes, we see all the flowers around in the garden and these beautiful flowers in front. But beyond all of those flowers that we call flowers, is each and every one of you, each and every one of us, a flower with its own distinctive uniqueness and beauty that we are called to give back to the world just by being ourselves as the flower that we are. There are flowers with many names like rhododendron and sunflower or lilacs and so on, but there are also flowers with names such as Coralie Clark, Jesse Wilson, Gloria Holland, Sarah, 
uh, Sarah Pickett, Lorraine Donaldson, Stuart Rose, Kurt Schneider, Bob and Leslie Zogan, Diane Garcia, Ike Nail, and so many unique flowers here. I, I would have liked to name everyone, but uh, you're all included there, and there's cricket also, the flower. So please know that. I'm not just making words here. I'm inviting each and every one of you to claim that flower that you are, the flower that has been nurtured by the earth ever since you were born, or even before you were born, in, in uh, the love of your parents, or maybe if there were some issues with your parents, you were born and then there were people who took care of you. So we are here right now where we are precisely because of all the many caring hands and hearts that brought us here and make us who we are. So the first pointer is to simply invite everyone to acknowledge that and acknowledge first the beauty and uniqueness that you are, that each and every one of us is. That is a very, very important point to begin living every day with, acknowledging that and knowing that I am good, I am beautiful, and I am affirmed to, to claim the flower that you are that we all are, and then see all around that there are so many other flowers that enable me to become who I am because they're who they are, and so I give my life in connection with the other flowers around. Knowing that, then, the second point I would like to offer is that each flower, or all flowers, cannot be the flower that they are without that rootedness on earth that wide, expansive, nurturing mother called Earth that we are all deeply planted in and rooted in. And what is that Earth? As we look at our Earth today, we see the Earth in so much turmoil and trouble. In the Buddhist tradition, there is this lotus flower that is taken as a symbol of awakening. The fullness of Buddha is the lotus flower. And the important message there is that that lotus flower only blossoms in the midst of the muck that supports it, the muck that is the earth right now. It's not just muck, but there's also nutrients and there are also many good things there, fertilizer and uh, surrounded by water and so on. But there's a lot of muck in there also. And it is that muck that we are called to take and see and take as our own. The muck of the violence going on around us, the war in Ukraine and so many other places, Tigray in uh, northern Ethiopia, Yemen, Israel, Palestine, in so many places, not in, in the headlines, so much violence domestic and personal and in, uh, psychological in so many other ways. And many of us bear the wounds of, those vi uh, of that kind of violence. So uh, let us acknowledge that. And as we do so, let us allow ourselves to remember that that's not the end of it. It is that violence precisely, and it is that muck that can invite us to take it on and bear the pain and rather than getting closed up and being resentful because I have this pain, allowing that pain to transform us and allow us to become instruments and vehicles of compassion. The word compassion is a Latin-based word that means to suffer with. And so it is through our knowing of our own suffering and claiming it and acknowledging it and allowing ourselves to live with it through breathing with it and not be overwhelmed by it and not be uh, dragged down by it, but to really be able to bear it and then see that I also am bearing the, my, my share of the world's pain and suffering and I see everyone else and everyone else bears their own and so I feel precisely connected in and through my own suffering. 
and we all bear it in our own different degrees. And in realizing that each and every one of us has that share of the world's suffering, then we can embrace one another in a much deeper way and acknowledge that which truly connects us, our embeddedness in this muck of this earth, which we are now called to transform so that we can become that lotus flower that symbols, symbolizes the fullness of awakening. Awakening rooted in compassion, that connectedness in the suffering, seeking to transform that suffering. So, to summarize that second pointer, acknowledging that we are suffering and we are suffering together, and acknowledging that we are all rooted on this earth that gives us nourishment, but also which also bears down upon us through this woundedness. The way to say that is that we belong. You belong. You are not alone. We are connected. That is also a basic message of the Buddhist tradition that many of you are also familiar with. The Buddha awakened and became a free and compassionate, wise and wise human being. What did he awaken to? Well, I can go on for a couple of hours de describing on the technicalities of what that is. I studied a little of that. But in one word, the Buddha is said to have awakened to the intimate interconnectedness of each and everything in this universe. You and me and everyone else and not just human beings, but all sentient beings, and all beings are intimately connected in a way that I cannot be who I am unless who you are who you are. You may have heard of the African word Ubuntu, which is precisely that message, that I am who I am only because you are who you are. So let's rejoice and celebrate together. That's another way of putting in words what the Buddha awakened to the intimate interconnectedness of each and every one of us. And so that gives us assurance, peace, that in spite of and in, in and through this suffering and struggle that I am undergoing in my own individual life, I know that I'm not alone and I can live through this because others are also living through theirs and we can join hands in that journey that we are called to see all the flowers and not just get concentrated or not just get pulled down by the muck. To see the flowers that are embedded in that muck and really rejoice our being flowers together. So the third point I'd like to offer in suggestion after acknowledging or uh, with that acknowledgement that each and every one of us is a flower with its own unique beauty and its own name and that we are all connected with one another from a deep level then we also see that I have a distinctive gift that I can offer to the world by simply being myself. Being myself as someone who has found that connectedness, someone who has found that peace, someone who has come to accept who I am, warts and all, as they say, with all my woundedness. It is precisely that that I can now offer to the world as my gift. In what way? I'm just plain old who I am. I have no special talents. I have no special gifts. I can't even uh, speak in public. I get nervous or I cannot even do anything. It's not so much the doing, but the being. And as each and every one of us comes to reclaim the gift that we are, the beautiful and unique flower that we are, with a specific aroma, with a specific contour and with a specific pockmarks here and there, then that flower then becomes something that can adorn this world and be celebrated as you are. Example, well, we all go to a grocery store every now and then. So when we are there, the other grocers seem, uh, can be seen as people who are just doing their thing and I'm doing my thing, so never mind them. But if we look at them also as flowers in their own right and uh, doing their thing and we see just a little greeting, an unexpected one perhaps for some people, but 
just that greeting might just make them open up and smile and say, oh, hello there. Or especially as we go, line up and we are there waiting for uh, the clerk to uh, check, us, check us out. Just a little word to the clerk saying, hello there, thank you for doing this. How's your day? I was in a meeting yesterday with a community in uh, Eugene, or, or uh, uh, in Mount, Mount Abbey, uh, uh, Seven Thunders, a community of meditators contem uh, of uh, contemplative practice, and some of them are here. And one of them shared just simply going out to the grocery store and greeting the clerk who had had a long day and was tired, and she just said, hello there, and she saw the name and uh, greeted the uh, tel uh, clerk by name. Was that you, Cricket? Thank you. And that really brightened up that person, and I'm sure that that little greeting made her day. And it made the person's day also, the one who greeted her. Those little ways in which we can really gift ourselves to everyone else. And there are other ways. If you see something happening in society that needs to be addressed, not us personally, but there are, people, uh, there are uh, institutions that do that, then write a letter to your congressperson or to your senator or to the president or to the newspaper, making them aware of the situation so that more people may also become aware of it. Or there may be some kind of action like a protest or a way of expressing certain kinds of outrage because of certain things that have happened and so on. And we just feel that we need to express ourselves, so we go out of our little comfort zone and do that, and so on. Each and every one of us can offer the gift of ourselves in our own little way towards a little more peace, a little more reconciliation, a little more well-being in the world. And as a community, I'm so glad to know that you are already doing that here at Salem UU, that you have these sessions of care and comfort for everyone, and I'm sure you also have your food bank and things like that. Those little ways can become little rivulets that can influence bigger and bigger rivulets and bigger waves and so on. So if we can really just join in that movement of transforming this world towards something that is less violent and less, uh, less uh, filled with animosity, less unequal, and less separated into a world where we can embrace one another, celebrating the flower that each and every one of us is all about, then what a different world this could be. And we have the key to birthing that new and different world. Just beginning with each breath and finding all we need in that breath, and from there allowing that breath to empower us to transform the world together. I'm so grateful for, your, for this opportunity to offer these words and to also be with you today. Thank you. Let us say a prayer together over these flowers for our congregation community. <clears throat> in the name of providence, which implants in the seed, the future, the flower, and in our hearts, the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of the highest in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner, what they are. In the name of the sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect, let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this thy holy resolve, may we be strengthened, knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen.
infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessings on these thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affections and devotion of thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship. But may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. In 1976, the Pauline Memorial AME Zion Church was nearly destroyed by arson. Because of this event, Dorothy Patch, longtime school teacher and community activist, and Reverend Nellie Thompson, founder of the Pauline Memorial AME Zion Church, began to work together to find ways to change Salem's racial climate. These two pioneers in racial diversity have lifted a strong voice for racial justice and equality in Salem. Motivated by their courage and leadership, the Nellie Thompson Dorothy Patch Scholarship Fund was established in 1993 to help students of racial and or ethnic origin in Salem achieve their dreams. To honor their legacy, the Thompson Patch Scholarship Fund provides financial assistance to underrepresented students of color in the Salem area to support their pursuit of college or trade school. Since 1995, the fund has assisted more than 250 students who have faced obstacles in their lives and have shown promise and resilience by overcoming adversity. We support UCS through our pledges, time, and connections with one another. We support the Salem community through the donations to the Marion Polk Food Share and for the month of June, the Nellie Thompson Dorothy Patch Scholarship Fund. <clears throat> for those of you in person, you may donate food to the Marion Polk Food Share by placing it in the little red wagon that is coming up in front of the sanctuary. For monetary donations, there will be bags that will be shortly passed amongst you, or if you are uh, either here or uh, watching us virtually, you may also donate by visiting our website. Thank you for maintaining the community of UUCS as well as the wider community of Salem. And now as we do this, we get to listen and to watch some more flowers that you all send in, this time with Doc, with Doc. I, I, I bet he doesn't know he can play the piano. With Guy Holman's uh, music on the piano. Thank you.
A lot of beautiful flowers out there. Thank you all for sending in those, those slides. Thank you so much for the wisdom that you shared with us today, Ruben. We're really honored to have you with us today. And next Sunday, uh, looks like I'm gonna be here. Yeah, it's, and uh, it's an annual tradition, an annual tradition whereby I uh, will simply uh, answer questions. You'll write questions about uh, anything having to do with uh, religion, spirituality, Unitarian Universalism, politics. It's all, all over the place, and it's a way for us to reflect together on uh, matters of great import, but uh, a lot of different questions. So one, it's a fun Sunday, so I hope you'll join us for that. So please do come next Sunday. Uh, let's see, there's always uh, something going on in the life of the community, and you can help uh, uh, find out what that, that is by going on our website and checking out the various activities and programs. I, I wanted to tell you about a couple of them. Uh, one, I, I did want to let you know that we'll be having a memorial service for Cindy Francis uh, next Saturday, June 11th at 11, uh, I mean at 10, 10 a.m., and I hope that members of this congregation who knew Cindy will make it a point to attend that memorial service. And then uh, next Sunday afternoon, we're having a lot of music after the service. There's a uh, music education uh, pre music education assistance project is going to be having some young students uh, going to be doing some wonderful things from one to about two uh, thirty, and then at four o'clock, there's the Delgani String Quartet is coming in. So what a day! What a day! What a weekend! So just wanted to give you a. Uh, 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 heads up on all the various things that are happening in the community. So, uh, why are you standing here, Sarah? I, why, why am I standing here? I know why you're standing here. You're standing here. I'm standing here. Oh, look! There's a thank you. Look, look, there's a thank you slide up there. There's a thank you slide, and it says... Who, who, who's it for? It's for Ezra Alexander. Ezra? The guy back there on our, on our machine. Should he Ezra. come up? Yeah, he should come up. Yeah. Ezra's graduating from high school this year. You can give it to him. Hey, man. Ezra has been so, he's graduating from high school this year. We couldn't have made it without Ezra. He's come in, he's learned the sound system, he's learned the, uh, the, the computer. He's learned, he's learned the computer, he's learned everything. He's a smart kid. He's headed off to the University of Utah, and he's going to be studying double major uh, math and dance. He's a fantastic. So, anyway. so, so Ezra, as part of our appreciation and sending you off out, in, out into the world, we offer this card with a little bit of monetary assistance. Thank you. Or coffee or whatever you might need. Yeah, books, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, it's been Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Great kid, we got great kids in this congregation. We just so, well, wish, wishing you well, Ezra, and uh, thanks for everything. As Rick takes the light from our chalice, lighting the social justice candle as a symbolic reminder of the light and justice we carry out into the world. As Ruben was saying, there's a lot of muck down there right now these days <laughs> in social justice, but we will get the lotus out one way or the other. 
Oh, there. Ah, <laughs> see? Sleight of hand. And suddenly the light is still there. It never goes out. Isn't that wonderful? As we extinguish the other chalices, may you carry the beauty and joy of this day in your hearts until we meet again. We will close with hymn number 76 in the gray hymnal for flowers that bloom about our feet. Number 76, please rise in body and spirit. Please join me in saying our closing words. May faith in the spirit of life, hope for the community of earth, and love for the sacred in one another be ours now and in all the days to come.